Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to never get hit by a charge attack ever again. So this is like a Rathian charge or a Kushala charge. And the reason I'm picking this particular move is because this is the move that most hunters get hit by. And the reason for that is because the startup frames are pretty much non-existent. Now, in, in Monster Hunter World and Gen 5, they actually nerfed this monster attack compared to the older generations. If you play an older generation game, a Rathian charge is pretty much instantaneous and they made the whole Rathian model as the hitbox, where in Monster Hunter World, they actually nerfed it and only the legs and the head are active hitboxes. Not to mention, they also increased the startup frames for the attacks, so you can actually see it coming. But nonetheless, it's still probably one of the fastest moves in the game and I know for a fact, most hunters get hit by this attack. Let's get right into it. So the green player is you, the hunter. This orange area represents the danger zone and these two blue circles indicate the monster's legs. So for short weapons, the reason it's so dicey is because if you're attacking the legs or the head here, it requires that you're up close to the monster and the closer you are to the active hitbox of the monster when it charges, means you have less time to react and get the hell out of there. And this is typically for sword and shield and dual blades. But if you are playing great sword or switch axe or charge blade in axe form, you have a benefit of having farther reach. So you're actually farther out here, but you have the disadvantage that you have a slower weapon. So you have less time to react. Whereas a dual blade or a sword and shield their hunter can react faster. So there's a bit of a trade-off depending on what weapon you're using. So the first thing I want to talk about is positioning. So one way you can preemptively avoid getting hit in anticipation of a potential charge is to position in such a way that you're already safe. And really the only way to do that is by standing on the side of the hitbox or the place you're attacking and attacking like this, or if you're attacking the legs, so maybe something like that or like this. But I find this only really works for the long range weapons like the great sword and the switch axe because they can utilize their range to stay away from the hitbox because like even if you're a sword and shield or dual blades and you're this close to the monster because you have to be this close you know you still might get clipped by the hitbox of the monster's hit so it's not that reliable not to mention in the heat of battle you know you're not always going to be able to perfectly position on the side of the monster's head in such a way that you are avoiding the potential charge follow-up charge that the monster does so what, what's a more reliable way to avoid taking damage from the charge well, let's just look at our defensive options here. So first thing you can do is strafe. And strafe just means literally pushing the control stick in the opposite direction. So you're moving away from the monster, literally just walking to the side. But the thing about strafing means uh, you have to be disciplined and you can't agree to last hit on the monster because if you're caught in an attack animation, you can't strafe. You literally can't do this. Next thing is Omni Roll. So say you're caught a little bit more in the charge here and there's not enough time to strafe. Well, you know, if, again, if you don't greed your attack, then you can just roll out of the way quickly, just in time. And by Omni Roll, I mean you can roll in a 360 direction. Guard, same deal. If you don't greet a hit, your hunter regains access to guard again. And if you have guard capabilities, and most weapons do, great sword, sword and shield, lance, gun lance, charge blade. I'm probably missing one, but you get the idea. You just guard it. You don't even have to move. You just press R. And guard in Monster Hunter is very strong. It comes out instantly. There's no lag. All right, the next thing is sheath and sprint. Uh, this one's a little bit more situational. Probably only the sword and shield or dual blades can use this. And even the dual blades probably doesn't even need the sheath because the dual blades is already so fast. It can just dash out of the way. So probably more sword and shield if you were planning on sheathing and for some reason you want to sprint to reposition. But for a weapon like the lance here, there's no way you're going to sheath in time. All right, next I got in yellow here. All right, so you can see it's a different color. It means yellow. And that's not as good an option as these as these green ones. And that's the roll cancel. Now, roll cancel means you can only roll in four directions. You can only roll forward, right, left, or back. And you can only roll cancel to cancel an attack animation. And even then, you can't instantly cancel every attack. You have to wait until a certain length of the attack animation plays out, and then you get access to roll cancel. It's basically a refund on some of the frames you would have lost in recovery. Again, it's not that good. You only have four directions, and and it might actually be impossible to avoid the monster charge with a roll cancel. For example, say I am standing here, but say there's a wall right behind me. So I'm, the monster has me pushed up against the wall and he's charging this way. Well, I can't roll left because I'm gonna roll into the wall. I can't roll back because I'm gonna roll into the wall. I can't roll forward because I'm gonna roll into the charge and I can't roll to the right because I'm still in the charge hitbox. Next we got guard point. Now guard point encompasses many different things. It could be charge blade guard points, where you, you have access to a few frames of guard after executing a particular move in the weapon move set, or it could be like long sword counters where you do foresight slash. But the issue with guard points is not only do they require timing, but you also have to be in the right sequence of the attack in order to gain access to guard point. 
For example, for Foresight Slash, you cannot just do a Foresight Slash. You have to do it after a attack. So if you don't have enough time to do an attack and do a Foresight Slash, you're just, you just can't guard point. The issue with guard point in trying to defend against a charge is that the startup frames on a charge are insanely fast. So there's no way you can, on reaction, identify that it's a charge and then go into a sequence of moves to gain access to guard point. It's just impossible. You would have to get lucky. Like you would have to already be in the certain part of the guard point sequence. And then by some stroke of luck, the next part of that attack sequence is a guard point and the monster just happened to do a charge. So again, I, I don't really consider that a very reliable way to defend against a charge. All right, the next time here I have is tackle and uh, the tackle you can kind of think of as a guard point sort of. But the reason I put tackle here is because I've been seeing a lot of comments lately saying just tackle things. And this is a topic for a completely different video, but you don't want to just tackle things unless you like carding. While tackle is a nice tool to have in your back pocket, I don't think you should be relying on, on it that much for great sword. And then the last option we have here is face tank it. So pray your HP is at full and just take the damage, get knocked back on your butt and just get up and try again. Good thing is charges don't do that much damage. So it's not the end of the world, but it is really annoying and it really disrupts the flow of battle getting hit by a charge. So what is the major point I'm trying to make? The major point is that the charge is an excellent teacher on mastering defense. Because it has such low startup frames, it is forcing you to be disciplined with defense or else you're just gonna get hit. The game doesn't care. The game is pretty much telling you it wants you to use these four methods of defense. These methods here are are more of a, you already effed up, but here's kind of a second chance at potentially not getting hit. So to do these top four methods of defense, you need to be disciplined and you need to not greed hits is what the game is trying to tell you. This means understanding how many attacks you can get in until the monster returns to his neutral. So if you become more disciplined as a hunter, stop greeting hits, you'll have access to all your defensive options and you'll never get hit by another monster charge ever again. Thanks for watching.